Hello, B here, and welcome back to Integrated Physics and Chemistry. I want you to imagine for a moment a world without energy. What would it be like? Well, as you just saw, it wouldn't be anything at all. Everything we do, everything we see, every move we make, every device we use, even our very existence is powered by different forms of energy. During our next few lessons, we'll look at some of these forms of energy and see where they come from, so that we hopefully don't end up in the dark again. But before we turn the lights back on, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to define energy and explain how it is related to work, and list the major forms of energy. Did you wake up with a lot of energy this morning, or were you dragging a bit? If you did wake up with a lot of energy, where do you think that energy came from? Maybe from getting a good night's sleep? Does sleep produce energy? And what exactly is energy, other than just the feeling of not being tired? We started off with a lot of questions. Take a moment to see how many of these questions you think you know the answers to. Pause the video and make a quick brainstorming list in your notes about how you could describe energy. Simply put, energy is the ability to do work. Do you remember what work is from our previous lessons? It's calculated as force times distance, so work is anything that applies a force and results in movement. And doing this requires energy. We've learned already that work is measured in a unit called joules. And it turns out that energy is measured in this unit as well. One joule is the amount of work it takes to apply a force of one newton over a distance of one meter, and this will require one joule of energy. If I need to do 50 joules of work to push a shopping cart down an aisle, how much energy will this take? The math is very easy here. It takes 50 joules of energy to do 50 joules of work. So mathematically, we can consider work and energy to be the same thing. As you work through the lesson PDF and practice questions, you'll explore how the work and energy equations are related to one another. We know that energy is used to do everything from running a race, to driving a car, to lighting up our homes. So clearly, energy can take a lot of different forms. You've already learned about two forms of energy in this course. Do you remember them? Kinetic and potential energy. Remember that kinetic energy is the energy of motion, while potential energy is any type of stored energy. We usually assume that potential energy is due to gravity and an object's position above the ground, but it could also be stored in other ways, such as the elastic potential of a slingshot. Further back in the course, you also learned about chemical potential energy, which is the energy stored in the bonds between atoms. This energy can be released or absorbed during chemical reactions, when substances are broken down or new substances are formed. Let's keep a list of possible forms of energy as we go. You'll find it helpful to record these in your notes. So far, our list has kinetic energy and several forms of potential energy. Pause the video if you need to, and make sure your list is off to a good start. One of the most common types of energy that you rely on is thermal energy, or heat. At a molecular level, this type of energy arises due to the motion of particles. When particles move quickly, they have a lot of kinetic energy and frequently collide both with each other and with their surroundings. This molecular kinetic energy can then be transferred as heat to objects that the particles come in contact with. Closely related to thermal energy 
is radiant energy, which travels as light waves. Where do most of the light waves on Earth come from? The sun. This radiant energy is often perceived as heat or thermal energy because, in addition to providing light, it can heat objects up on contact. If you haven't done so already, be sure to update the forms of energy list in your notes with thermal and radiant energy. What are you watching this video on right now? Most likely, you're using a computer, tablet, or cell phone. What type of energy do these devices make use of? Hint: At some point, you have to plug them in to recharge. What type of energy are they gaining from the outlet in the wall? Electrical energy. Chances are you have a lot of devices in your home that use electrical energy in some form. In fact, why don't you pause the video and see if you can list at least five things in your notes that use electricity? What did you think of? A few that come to my mind are my TV, refrigerator, lamp, ceiling fan, and toaster. Electrical energy or electricity arises due to the movement of a certain subatomic particle that you learned about earlier in the course, the electron. When these negative charges move through wire, they generate electrical energy that can be used to power a lot of things. We'll spend a whole unit later in the course learning about this form of energy. I'll give you one guess what type of energy this represents. Sound. You may not have thought of sound as a type of energy, but based on how it's making my head pound right now, I think it definitely is. In fact, the sound coming out of these speakers is so intense that it's making this yellow paint powder bounce up and down. Sound travels as a wave, and it is energy because it causes particles in the medium it is traveling through to vibrate. We'll also learn more about sound in a later unit. The last type of energy we'll cover today is nuclear energy. This type of energy is stored in the nucleus of an atom, and when it is released, the results can be dramatic. The sun, for example, constantly undergoes a nuclear fusion reaction that turns hydrogen atoms into helium atoms. This reaction releases 3.8 times 10 to the 26 joules of energy every second. To put that number in perspective, it's many times larger than the total amount of energy consumed on Earth in an entire year. Did you get all of the energy forms recorded in your notes? Here they are again, in case you missed one. Pause the video and double check your list before we wrap this up. As we went through the lesson today, we saw that energy is the ability to do work, and that energy comes in many different forms. As we looked at these different forms of energy, you may have noticed that some of them seem very related. Radiant energy from the sun causes our planet to become warm, which represents thermal energy. Thermal energy is actually a type of kinetic energy that arises from particles moving quickly. Of course, we can also create our own thermal energy with heaters that use electrical energy, and that same electrical energy can also produce more radiant energy and even sound energy. It starts seeming like a whole tangled web of energy. In our next lesson, we'll look at why that is and also examine the sources of these forms of energy. After all, energy has to come from somewhere. Until then, remember the universe is vast and full of surprises, so never stop exploring. See you next time. Hey, hey.